Welcome back to another Game Creator tutorial. Today we're going to go over objects, how to make them, what exactly they offer. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so in your project, as long as the object layer is selected, you can right click and click new scene object. So right now this is blank as far as avatars go. This one that has an avatar, we can see that we can rotate the orientation and it will adjust accordingly. So now if we select this, we can click up here and we can actually add an avatar. I'm going to hit OK on this girl right here. And then if we're going to bring this down a little bit. And we can further customize this by clicking on the double arrows. This is going to give us a list of the actions, which are basically all the animations that are associated with this avatar. We could click on walking and then click off and we can see that she starts to walk. We could click attack and she'll start to attack. We're just going to click standby. Note that you can also see the frames and pick an individual frame if you wanted. The next thing you can do is you can rename this. So I'm going to select this and name this girl too. And then over here on this icon, this is where you can get a list of your objects in the scene. So you can see that we have the player object, which is right here. We have the Colette right here. And then we have girl two, which is behind right here. And you can also search up here for easy access. You can click off just to get rid of that. All right, so that was the first way to add an object. Another way to add an object is to go to the scene object tab right here. And this has a whole list of different kinds of objects that you can actually make and customize. These are gonna have to be a separate video but just real quickly note that you can go to all these different ones and let's just say that you wanted another character from this list. You can just click on them, hold and drag out and it will drag a particular avatar already set up for your object. Now doing it this way comes with the same options as before. You can always customize further and even change the avatar from there. What you will notice from this selection is that you can start to preset objects, making them more like prefabs. Again, this will probably have to be its own video because there is a lot of power in this tab right here. All right, so now we know how to create the characters. Now let's see what objects can actually do. So most of your options for your objects are gonna be on this right hand side. We're gonna start right here with this column. These are like event pages in RPG Maker. You can create more and more event pages as well. Notice that each time you create an event page, it starts with a blank avatar. So what I suggest is that we'll just delete these ones here. I suggest that if you want more and you want to keep the avatar, you can just simply click copy and paste and it will bring that avatar over. It will also bring any settings over as well. So you might have to delete some events or appearing things, but we'll get to that here in a minute. And the important concept to understand with these event pages is that the highest numbered page is always trying to run first. And so we have to give conditions if we don't want those pages to run first. Let's say we wanted the object to start in this logic page. And then after a quest, it goes to logic page two. We would have to set a condition in order for that page to start. And that would be done in the appear tab right here. And so real quick, if we wanted to set a condition, we would click add. You can select from a whole lot of different options here. Real easy is just to do object switch variable. You can select from A through G. I'm just gonna select A and we're gonna make sure that when it's on, it will go to this page. All right, so we've given this page a condition. Now let's give it something to do so that we know that the character is on this page. We can click on event, and this is gonna be what happens when it's on this page. Now we have a few triggers. We have a click, which is when you've actually pressed a button next to it, sort of like you're talking to it. We have a touch, which is just where the player just touches the object. We have a parallel, which is always going at all times. And then we have an appear function, and leave functions, which is awesome. RPG Maker doesn't offer these, and so these are really nice that you would have, when it appears on this page, it runs certain logic and, that, and it only does it then. When it leaves this page, it will run additional logic. So for example, let's say that when this object appears into page two, we only want it to do something one time. And for instance, let's just say that we wanna to go to scene objects, uh, set object behavior, and we want to change its action. We wanna change it from standby to walking. So we just want to do a one-time switch to walking. I'm going to hit OK. By the way, this is also going to be its own video. Super useful runtime action. I'm going to hit OK here. So in order to finish this logic, we need to give this object a trigger. And so that we're just going to say when the player clicks on this object that it's going to trigger into this event page. So we're going to go to this event page one. and We're going to say an event click event. We're going to double click into this and say the game progress of an object switch, the number A or the letter A, we'll change to on. We'll hit okay. And now we can play test this. And if we click on this character, when the player gets up to there, it will trigger the event page two. 
So that's going to do it for this tutorial. I know there's a whole basic settings tab that has a ton of different options. There'll be more videos going over those specific topics, but this was to get an object on the map, know how to trigger it and know how to event some logic in it. Like subscribe if you like this video. Also special thanks to all the new patrons that are joining. Thank you for the support. If you have any questions, comments below, Steam Forms will get you figured out. And with that said, I will see you at the next video.